Gray Area talks about sex, relationships, mental health, and more. Our content is intended for a mature audience, and the views and opinions expressed on the show are those of the talent and guests alone and are provided for informational purposes only. We want to talk to you, but this is a TV show, and our hosts are not qualified healthcare professionals. If you're depressed, feel your life is at risk, or need immediate assistance, please seek professional help or dial 911. What's up, everyone? I'm Sasha Gray, and this is Gray Area. And I'm dumbfounded. Sasha's co-host, the Batman to her Robin. Oh, yes. And if we were going to be superheroes, what powers would we have? Ah, I would want to fly. It's, it's always been a mix-up. I want to fly or be invisible. Ooh, okay. But if I was invisible, I could sneak onto a plane and technically do both. <laughs> that was well thought out, actually. You could get your miles up that way, too. Uh, what would I want? Oh, I would want to read minds because I was a battle rapper, you know, my roots, and uh, I like predicting other people's rhymes. You okay. Know? Yeah. I like yeah. that. Flexing on them. Yeah. That's a good one. So let's watch this smooth segue. When we look at people on social media, it sometimes seems like they are superhuman. But you know, at the end of the day, everyone farts. Oh, where? Oh, my mom and my sister took like 10, 20 years before they farted in front of me. <gasps> It's like no. spotting Sasquatch, but when you hear it, it's, it's beautiful, it's magnificent, uh, it's an opus. Not my family, <laughs> opposite. It was like a beatbox, I was freestyling over it, it was crazy, <laughs> yeah. All right, so today we wanted to talk about that idea, social media versus reality, you know? Living for likes. Yeah, it's like Instagram is the girl you bring home at night, they still got the makeup on and the hair and the shoes, and then the real girl is the one you wake up next to wearing your old t-shirt, hair going all directions, raccoon eyes with the smeared makeup and all. Who said anything about wearing a t-shirt though? Ooh, okay. I don't know. All right, so we live in a world now where you can make a living being liked. Even if you don't make your living as an influencer, we all feel the pressure of social media. Yeah, I mean, do you feel any pressure on social media? 100%. It's the way that I communicate to my fans and to the public. If I have a, a new project that I wanna talk about, if I'm on tour, I have to let the people know this way, but then there's those in-between times where I would like to focus on the creativity, but I have to remember that that's a beast and you have to feed the beast to keep it going. Yeah, I get scared scrolling and accidentally liking like a hundred week old picture or Ooh, something that's... like that. You know what I'm saying? Or if you have a girl. Dangerous. For every like hot girl I follow, I follow like three art accounts to throw off the trail of my girl. You know Smart what I'm saying? Man. Yeah, Smart exactly. man. <laughs> I like three art pictures and then like the hot girl's picture. I like that. Yeah. So cool. if anyone knows the pressure of social media, it's tonight's guest. She's one of the top five most followed TikTokers in the world, and she's only 18. Now she's moving on to a music career, and she shares my last name, Lauren Gray. I am officially my own biggest fan. And now it's time for dance. <laughs> I am Beverly Hills Oh, should I like snap? Oh, a little black moment. It's very easy to get caught up and try to be someone you're not. The only way to be happy and successful is to be yourself. My mom's FaceTiming me. What good timing. Gosh, I'm so cute. Yeah! <laughs> Welcome! Oh, thank you. So we know that you got your start on Musical.ly when you were 13 and we just wanted to know what it's like growing up in front of everyone. Um, it's, it's had its ups and downs. I mean, it definitely taught me a lot really quickly, but uh, yeah, it's been all right. It's really all I know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, some of those pictures, some of the, the content you put up gets millions of likes. Have you seen what actually gets the most type of likes? Um, uh, I don't know. There's there's a big mix. It's been really confusing recently, but I think the most organic pictures do the best, or videos, or whatever, because people just want to see real life, you know? Right. Mistakes, too. <laughs> yeah, mistakes get a lot of likes. Yeah. Yep, <laughs> I know it. So I've heard you talk about bullying, and at one point, um, a certain comment really affected the way that you felt about yourself and your body image. Can you tell us all a little bit about that for those of the people that are watching and 
the fans right here that might not know about that? Yeah, so there's there's been a lot of comments that have affected me, but when I was 14, I was live streaming on You Now, and that was like a thing. And uh, someone commented that I was fat, and I never really, I had never really gotten that comment. And it was right after I got off tour, and I did, I did gain a little weight, but I never thought about it. And uh, after that, I moved to LA, and I developed this like crazy eating disorder. And it took a long time to recover from that, but uh, I'm, I'm finally in a good place again, so. That's good to hear, but that's also crazy to think that anybody would ever consider calling a 14-year-old fat. Yeah, I mean, I feel like I was kind of, I, I was a open target because uh, right. I was young and impressionable and people kind of, they kind of knew that something they said could affect me. 100%. Uh, so, and I was a lot smaller. I didn't have as many followers as I do now. So I saw those kinds of things. We always I tend see. to pay attention to the negative comments. Like out of a thousand, we focus on that one hater comment. You right. know what I mean? I yeah, let a, I let a 14 year old kid hurt me. Uh, sure. no, oh, no, yeah. no, no, no. Oh yeah. All right, so how, do, how are you feeling like these days? Because to me, when I look at your posts, you seem very confident and <laughs> outgoing and sure of yourself. Do you consider yourself a sex symbol? No, <laughs> I, I mean, I definitely don't. I feel like for me, there there's that balance between, I mean, I'm 18 now, so you know, there's, a, there's some provocative stuff, but I'm still myself and, uh, which is kind of silly and, and crazy. And uh, I don't know, I feel like I kind of have a little bit of both. So I wouldn't say I'm just like a sex symbol. I don't know if any of my fans will call me a sex symbol. I'm Maybe the opposite. I, I, think, I think they would, <laughs> but I mean that in the best of ways too. Like there, there is this huge pressure to live up to an expectation, right? Definitely. Uh, especially as a woman and especially as a young woman. Definitely. I feel like there's a lot of, I mean, especially now, I've, I've, I've been really fortunate to get to kind of see how social media has evolved. Yeah. And I wasn't even there from the beginning, but even from five years ago to now, there's been a huge shift. Crazy. Especially when it comes to beauty standards mm -hmm. and, and what you should look like. And um, I feel like this year has sort of been and especially with everything happening in the world, a lot of coming to terms with, uh, you know, how much I'm willing to conform. And I feel like recently that's been not a lot <laughs> because, oh, thank not you. 2020 is the wokest year. 2020, 2020 is the wokest yeah. year, I swear. It is, it really is um, because the standard's so high. Uh, and it's just not, I mean, I had a girl DM me yesterday and she was like, you know, I, I saw you were talking about um, body dysmorphia. How did you deal with that? And I was like, you just have to realize the biggest thing is realizing that what you see on social media isn't real. Right. I can even say that about myself. I mean, two years ago, I used to edit my photos like crazy um, to fit what I thought was this, you know, ideal beauty standard. Well, um, speaking on that, what is the difference between the social media Lauren Gray and like the reality Lauren Gray? You know, I try to, I try to keep it as real as I can, um, but I feel like, I also feel like now in, in 2020, there's also so much that I can't do at this. Well, it's so there's been so much freedom. There's also been so much more restriction. Mm. Um, so I don't know. I feel like I try to be myself on social media, but I mean, I mean, people just found out that I have a boyfriend, which I kept secret for months because I wanted to make sure that like, you know, it was solid. It was we real. Good. It was real, and it very much is. But like, I I I sort of had to. Uh, I, I took my time with that. So there's some things that, you know, I keep private and, Do know. they just find out or is it like clues? You know what I mean? Like, People kind of already knew. You know what's really funny? I saw an elbow they're, in they're, they're like, let's zoom in. They're probably watching what? this right now. The let's look at the reflection There's been of a lot glasses. of that. This I know it. is the craziest thing. My fans are detectives. Um, they saw, they went on my personal Spotify saw that I made a playlist for someone named Kyle, went through all my followers to see if I had any, and he doesn't even go by Kyle on on social media. So they, they found his yeah. artist profile, yeah. Googled him, saw his name was Kyle, and then put the pieces together. Yep. Um, but the majority of people didn't know until like today. Uh, but they are, they will find out anything. I, I can't get anything past them at I all. see you right here, Sasha. You look like something that you're an expert on. <laughs> Unfortunately, yes. <laughs> and the thing is like, 
I get it. People do want to be close to you and they want to feel like they know you. But for me, when you say like you want that part of you that's private, it's always come down to safety, really. Yeah, definitely. Really come down to safety. Definitely. So I've heard you talk about how difficult it is to actually make friends. That's something that I can also relate to as well. Um, yes. People having this expectation of like who you are or what you can give them and what you can deliver. So how do you, how are you dealing with that these days? Uh, well, my circle is really small. I'm sure people yeah. are sick of hearing me talk about it. Um, but I feel like the best thing for me is finding the people that I can really, really trust mm -hmm. and and sticking with those people. I also feel like a lot of people are scared of me and they're like scared to be friends with me. Is it an intimidation why. thing? I guess. I don't know. I feel like I'm not an intimidating person, but I, I mean, I... I don't know. I Except like those like 15 chains you're rocking. It's like. Yeah, <laughs> well, that's not a daily occurrence. That was just, like this, that was a special thing. It's just a special uh, <laughs> Friday. It's not a regular Friday. Yeah, but Tuesday. I don't know. It is difficult because you never know. I never really know what someone wants from me. Yep. Uh, do you just want a friend or do you want a couple thousand followers? I don't know. Yep. Uh, so mm -hmm. it, t it took a lot of getting to know people really well and sort of weeding out the fakes um but i have yeah. a really great group of friends so that's good and um i mean that's something you're gonna have to uh keep that guard up as you go into this music career which you've kind right. of jumped into um tell us a little bit about this jump to music yeah so i performed for the first time when i was 13 on a social media tour which i'm sure y'all are familiar with they go on stage play games meet and greet right right it's really it's a really strange concept but i didn't know what i was going to do on stage and i was oh, like wow. oh i'm not going to be one of those that plays the game i'm going to sing but i had never sang live i had never really sang in front of anyone and my parents were like oh god what's gonna happen <laughs> um so yeah i sang riptide for 30 shows and I was like, man, I really like performing. And then I started writing music. I went to London and like recorded my first couple of songs. And then it just kind of went from there. And I signed uh, to Virgin Capital when I was 16. Uh, and I put out like 10 or 11 singles since then. I don't even know how many it is now. Nice. But nice. Yeah. It's amazing. All right. So are you up for a little challenge? I am. OK. So this is a little game we like to play to get to know our guests quickly. It's called 20 and 60. OK. All right, so Dem is gonna ask you some questions and we're gonna see if you can answer all 20 in 60 seconds. Okay. All right, here we go. Let's start the clock. Try to beat our previous two episode record and it goes right now. What's the first thing you do in the morning? I brush my teeth. What's the last thing you do at night? I brush my teeth, wash Who was, my face. <laughs> yeah, you know. Who was your first famous follower? Uh, geez, I don't remember. I'm just gonna say, I, I don't know. Can I pass? Okay, what's, oh, wow. the, what's the last song you listened to? Uh, probably something by Lil Peep. Where do you see yourself in 20 years? Um, hopefully married with kids and successful and happy. Who would you want to play you in a movie awesome. about your life? <laughs> um, <laughs> awesome a movie about my life? Oh my God, Rachel McAdams is my favorite, so. Ooh. Okay, what is your nice favorite hair. junk food? Mm, Reese's peanut butter cups. Would you rather be in a cage with a tiger or your biggest troll? Oh, my biggest Ooh. troll, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> let's go. If you're you reported <laughs> missing, where's the first place someone should look for you? Um, probably somewhere in my house. I don't leave my house. Skydiving or stand-up comedy, which is scarier? Oh, stand-up comedy. <laughs> Eminem or Taylor Swift, who would you go on a hike with? Oh my God, Eminem. Okay, that is 11 questions. That's pretty good, actually. And Eminem, um, I heard like your dad was a fan of Eminem, is that true? Oh, my dad's a fan, but I'm the biggest fan. Oh, you're, you're biggest the biggest fan. fan. You're the biggest all fan. All time, yes. Yeah. Nah, I'm, I'm, I'm an Eminem fan too, so shout yeah, out Eminem. Nah, he's my favorite, right. man. Cool. All right, so let's check in with our live chat. They're here uh, sending us oh. snacks. We got the snack train rolling already. Amazing. And somebody asked, what if your biggest troll is a tiger? Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, then I'm then screwed. Yeah. <laughs> I'm screwed. Um, uh, some people are memeing us, but they're like halfway where they remove our nose. It's nice. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> All right. So we have one right here. A better one. I'm so interested to hear from Lauren. Her rise to fame was so interesting and she harvested it very well. But that's that's like a compliment. So yeah, that's yeah, a compliment. Well, well, yeah. Shout out to that. And we don't yeah. get a lot of those on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, seriously. All right. Well, we want to hear from you. So hit us up on Discord. Let's do this. Um, and uh, stay right here. Yes, stay right there. We're going to slip into our own DMs when we get back with Lauren Gray. <laughs> I'm going to 
going to be sliding into my own DMs. So this one just says, hate you, Lauren. And I really appreciate it. It's to the point. And, you know, she didn't do it publicly. She made it private. And she just wanted to let me know how she feels. I respect it. The next one's pretty straightforward. Can you literally marry me? And then replies again in a couple hours and says, please marry me. So he's a bit more polite the next time. But I'm not sure I'm looking for that kind of commitment right now. Welcome back to Gray Area. Today we have Lauren Gray with us and we're talking about social media versus reality and living for likes. Yes, and that is a fun idea. Ooh, let's go there. Everyone, get out your phones, all right? We're gonna randomly go through our messages, our DMs on Instagram, and let's read through them. Are you guys brave enough? I'm ready. Uh, yikes. <laughs> Classic. <laughs> All right, it's a couple of Let's Build fams. Uh, okay. Uh, password. <laughs> All right, should I go first? Let's do it, because I'm pulling. Okay, there we go. All right, I'm going to go first. Uh, I just want you to spit in my mouth, kind sir, with an emoji of a drooly mouth, which makes it far more vulgar with the emoji. Nice. That's... Very polite. <laughs> very polite. But very, very kind sir. But I love Would when you it's spit to the in point. My mouth? It's to the point. They're getting their point across. I love that in a DM. Escort me to the ball and spit in my mouth, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Uh, all right, Lauren, what do you have? Okay, I get a lot of people who message me like all like every day, constantly. <laughs> uh, this one says, Psst, do you eat hot dogs? If so, what is your most favorite preferred hot dog? Does it change due to factors such as location, your mood, the day, place, or event? One of my favorites is the chili and cheese dog. Um, <laughs> So, it's, yeah, they, didn't, they didn't even wait for your response. No, they just no, having no, a just, full hot dog conversation. No, give me all of the details. <laughs> yeah, I guess like relish and ketchup. <laughs> well, there you go. He's been waiting like two years for that answer right Yeah, there. and there it is. <laughs> there oh, man. Sasha, what you got? Uh, so, nothing. He, it's just a bunch of kids from Brazil sending me Billie Eilish videos. <laughs> nice. I know, like, I'm that is very internet obrigado. right there. I, I'm sorry, guys. That's all I know in Portuguese. But <laughs> <laughs> that's... Well, Lauren, uh, I got to ask you. Uh, we all deal with mean comments. Is there, like, something that really gets to you in particular? I mean, you get tons of comments, whether it's positive or negative, every day. But what really gets you? I mean, I can take a lot when it's about me. I don't care if it's hmm. about me. But when they come from my dog. Because oh. my dog mm. is the most precious little angel you'll ever see in your life. And people comment like, oh, your dog looks like a rat. No, she doesn't. <laughs> no, she doesn't. And it's just like, that's what bothers me the most. It's not even me. Yeah. It's like yeah. people around me or my dog, most importantly, my dog. You start commenting back. Yeah, I'm like, no, she's not. Oh, the rat She's thing. purebred. Blah, blah. <laughs> you post yeah. pictures of rats like, does this look like my dog to you? They'd probably say yes. She's, <laughs> there's a little bit of resemblance, I guess. Yeah, right. So speaking of being strong, I saw that you recently addressed your own sexual assault, and I just want to say that I really admire you for being able to do that. Thank you. Um, on this show, we have callers that come in, come on the show, and they are seeking advice um, or sometimes validation, and really talking about things that are not easy for anybody. So, what has your journey looked like um, towards your own recovery, or is it an ongoing process? You know, I feel like it is. It's always gonna be there, mm -hmm. um, but I, you know, I, it happened when I was 13, and then uh, social media happened, which was like it kind of opened a new chapter in my life, and actually made it a lot uh, easier for me to sort of transition into this new part of my life. And there was a lot of people that came into my life that. You know, there was a lot of new things happening, and I feel like that kind of gave me a new outlook. So that helped a lot, but also just talking to people. Mm -hmm. um, and I feel like now that you know, I was I went public with it, even though it wasn't necessarily something that I was ready to do. Yeah. Um, it, it helped a lot because I feel like I could help other people, and through helping other people, I help myself. That's one of the plus sides of the internet, and one of the plus Definitely. sides of social media is you get to develop this community. Definitely. And we appreciate you sharing that for real. Of course. And uh, since we're already digging in deep, I think it's time to go to our first caller. Lauren, are you game? This I'm, is. Yes, I'm this, ready. This is Zach him phoning in. I don't know why Hi I'm guys. pointing to the wall. <laughs> it's a call. <laughs> All right. Don't point to the wall. It's a call. All right. Hey, what's, what's up, up, Zach? What's up, Zach? 
<laughs> hey, um, so the guy I'm currently seeing is a social media personality, and whenever we get together, he can barely go 20 seconds without looking at his phone. Um, I mentioned that it was a bit annoying, um, and he apologized, but I've yet to kind of see any kind of definite effort to try and be more attentive when we hang out together. Should I give him an ultimatum or just cut things off now? This is a good one, I think, for you because it is a profession. It is your job, too. Yeah. How do you balance that? There is there's definitely a fine line between working on your phone and taking that time to sort of just be with someone and be present mm -hmm. in the moment. And that's something I have to remind myself of because social media, you can always work harder. Um, but I think maybe just, you know, tell, tell them how you feel and be like, hey, it'd be cool if you could take some time for me and pay attention to me. I mean, my boyfriend has to do that all the time because I forget that I'm right here in this moment. Um, but yeah, I think maybe talk about it. Is it somebody, I, I didn't hear the very beginning. Zach, did you say it's somebody that you're dating or just a friend? Uh, elevated hanging out with. Sorry? Uh, hanging out with, I hanging think. Out with. Hanging, out hanging out with. Yeah, just tell me how you feel. Be like, hey, you know, I'm right here. Talk to me. Yeah. Put the phone down. Maybe baby steps. Take it to 20 to 40 seconds intervals. All right. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for your call, Zach. Appreciate Thank you calling. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so it looks like we have Matilda on the phone. What's up, Matilda? Now she's oh, on the, on the <laughs> now wall. We, now Matilda's on the wall. On the wall. All right, we got <laughs> hey, Matilda. Hey, how are you guys? Good, good. good. What's your how question you? for us? Good. Um, so I can be kind of like emotionally closed off in my relationships. Um, I've been called cold and distant before. And so I was just wondering if you have any tips on how to let your walls down with the people in your life. Wow, that's a tough one. I felt that though. I'm, I'm yeah. like that too, man. I thought by the scarves behind you, you're a warm person, to be honest. <laughs> but uh... <laughs> She uses them to warm up. No. Uh, what what you know i think a good good question a good way to get to the root of the problem is wondering like why do you put those walls up i know i don't know um maybe it's just like confidence i don't know mm. Mm. yeah i think the best thing you can do is really work on yourself uh, i feel like it mm -hmm. all starts with you and also just finding the right people that you can open up with uh, and that you feel comfortable with because um, yeah. for me, once I started opening up to people that I trusted, it was kind of a snowball effect. And now I meet someone and I share my whole life story. Um, so I feel like just kind of confronting whatever's happening inside. No, that sounds really deep. I'm really sorry to get like No, 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 get into but, it. But it's true. It's true. I feel like that it all stems from something. Yeah, no, I, I had yeah. I had the same problem. It, it was quite a journey for me. I, you know, I have an Asian dad. It was walls all day. I come from a long lineage of walls. <laughs> Um, and then I had to keep picking, picking away at it and slowly start building more bridges. And I, once I started doing that, I saw more opportunities. I, I made more friends and um, I really found more about, found out more about myself, to be honest. Right. Yeah. I also feel like maybe it's, have you been hurt in the past? Like, did something happen to make you feel this way? Not anything specific, but just kind of, you know, it accumulates over yeah. time. <laughs> I think practice on friends. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. If you're if you're trying to open up, like there has to be one or two people in your life that you're really close with. Practice on them, and yeah. not that practice ever makes perfect, but yeah, and you could you could kill try. two birds with one stone and talk to your friends about how to open up, because then yeah. you're opening up about opening up. Exactly. Just yeah. a thought. Sometimes you have to get out of your own headspace to to get there, to arrive there and talk it out, and then you'll discover something new too. So definitely. Right. Thank you so much for calling, Matilda. Thank you, guys. Thank you. <laughs> All right, so part of the appeal of social media is that fans feel like they get to know a celebrity personally. So let's check out some tweets, and we're going to guess who wrote them and see how well we know people after all. Okay. This is You Are What You Tweet. All right, so this first tweet is, and by the way, you guys have to guess, like, it's a multiple choice, so you get to guess out of okay. a few answers. So the first one is, true love might exist. I was just hungry. Wow, well, what are the options? Let's see. Who said it? Lizzo, Ariana Grande, or Billie Eilish? Oh, I love this tweet. I'm going to say Ariana. Dumb. OK, I was going to say Ariana, too, but uh, now i got to switch it up. I'm going to go um, Lizzo. The answer, who was it? 
Ariana. Oh, Ariana. Oh, it, it's, it's so It's the lowercase so letters. Ariana. It's the lowercase letters for me. All right, what's the next one? Does anyone think global warming is a good thing? I love Lady Gaga. I think she's a really interesting artist. Okay, that's like. I must. That sounds mad big. Kanye. I don't even want to hear the multiple choice. That sounds Kanye. Wow. <laughs> All right, who said it? Britney Spears, Cher, or or Lady Gaga? Uh, um, I'm gonna say uh, Britney Spears. I'm gonna say Lady Gaga because I just can't see where that would come from. Yeah. <laughs> All right, who was it? Britney. Britney. Uh, okay. Oh okay. yeah, actually, wait, wait, I don't Do know. Do we have what, a date on this? We totally should have gotten Britney. <laughs> we don't have a date on this. No. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. 2011. Oh, yeah, that's pretty accurate. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. All right, last one. Boob. Boob. Boob that's is a it. great word because it looks like the actual thing, too. You know, the word itself. All um, right. I was it Cardi B, Nicki Minaj, or Lil Nas X? What do you think, Lauren? I have to say Cardi. I definitely tweeted Boob before. There's no <laughs> doubt about that. But um, I'm going to say Lil Nas X. And the answer is... Ooh, oh, nice. That was you a guys guess. are good at this. Nice. That was good. Well, when we come back, we're going to dig in deep into all our issues when Dr. Michelle joins us on the wall. Welcome back to Gray Area. Lauren Gray is hanging out with us and we're about to be joined by another female powerhouse. She's a world-renowned clinician psychologist, clinical psychologist, who specializes in working with millennials on self-image. She helps them tackle fear and anxiety and will no doubt have lots of good advice to give. Please welcome Dr. Michelle Miller. Hey, Dr. Michelle. Hi guys. How are you doing? Nice Thanks to for connect here. No, thank you for calling all the way from New York. Uh, we know you're killing it and really uh, doing some good work because I saw your Yelp reviews, five star reviews. Um, oh, thank you. Yeah, tell us more about your work. <laughs> yeah, so um, I've been in private practice for probably about eight years now, and I've been working a lot with millennials and um, really addressing a lot of self-image, self-esteem uh, issues, interpersonal issues, um, ways of relating. Um, and so, yeah, it's been it's been a really rewarding process. Yeah, I'm sure it's uh, even more busier now because it's the boom of social media over the last 10 years or so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. So for since sure. you're also active on social media, do you find yourself sometimes slipping into the pressures of social media? And how do you advise your clients to handle that? Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, yeah, so, you know, you know, a big part of uh, how I feel like I can help my clients is through my own journey and my own experience around that. And even just growing up, you know, just having uh, to go through some struggles around um, my self image and how I put myself out there and how I want to be seen or how I want others to see me and, you know, kind of tuning into whether or not that's really aligned with my true self or my authentic mm -hmm. self and um you know that's that's definitely been a very uh, meaningful journey and i feel like i've gotten to a point where um there's a level of attunement that i i feel like i've mastered for myself at least um in relation to um you know if the if the way that i put myself out there is aligned with uh, just the, the my truth, my inner truth, and my authentic self. Yeah. And you know, in, in working with clients, uh, it it's a really rewarding process to see them getting closer to that. Like starting off with like feeling uh, self doubt and having those self esteem and self image issues, and getting right. to right. a place where they can really trust themselves and really trust the authentic nature of who they are well, and well, how they can bring that out into, into the our world. Today. Yeah, it definitely fits in, and I'm, um, there's no doubt you can help us out by answering some of these calls. Are you are you down, Mr. Mich uh, Dr. Michelle? Sorry, yeah, <laughs> Dr. Michelle, are you down? For sure. Okay, Let's here we it. go. Hi, Matt. What's up? Hey, y'all. Hi. 
Uh, so I just had a question. Uh, my question is that, like, I always feel like the need to uh, constantly, like, every time that I post, I'm constantly looking at, like, every single like and every comment and how many that I'm getting. And I feel like there's a certain point where I can recognize that it's unhealthy, but I can't necessarily stop myself from doing it. And also, I, I constantly, like, I feel like I need feel the need to be someone else as well. So, like, is there any way that you guys have found, like, to better deal with that stuff. Mm, Dr. Michelle, can you? Yeah, thanks for sharing that. First of all, thanks for being courageous enough to, to share that. Um, when you say you find yourself wanting to be someone else, can you say a little bit more about that? Man. In terms of what that means? Sorry, what was that? When, when you said before that you find yourself wanting to be someone else, can you say a little bit more about what you mean by that? yeah like i feel like i put on more of a like an act when i when i post on instagram like i feel like i'm not necessarily myself like um mm -hmm. i feel like i'm more of a not to say elevated but i'm trying to come off as more of like perfect in a sense if, if, if that. i think everyone's mm -hmm. a little bit guilty of that though um, you know, on different social media platforms, we all What do you have think, Lauren? <laughs> Everyone looks at me, <laughs> man. Uh, no, definitely. I mean, I've definitely, I, I mean, it's, it's my job, but also, you know, I compare myself to people constantly. Uh, but coming from someone who is an influencer, uh, a lot of what you see and a lot of what you're trying to achieve isn't achievable. And you kind of got to come to terms with that. I have to do that. I mean, I compare myself to beautiful Instagram models every day, but that's not who I am. And I feel like people like it more when you are yourself. And mm -hmm. I mean, I get the most likes when I post a picture. I had an allergic reaction and it was like one of my most liked photos. Um, so I think people, <laughs> people want to see you as who you are. That's the most relatable thing. Um, and people want to be able to relate to who you are. You know, I feel like people create this image that's so unachievable uh and then you see him in real life and it's like oh you know so yeah it's kind of what you got to remember for sure thanks so much for your call matt is there anything else you want to ask uh no thank you guys good thank luck. you man good luck stay strong uh i really love this part of the show i'd love to talk to someone else hi danielle hi oh this is a call okay how you doing <laughs> Oh, good. How, how are you guys? We're all good. good is there good. something you'd like to ask us, Lauren and Dr. Michelle? Oh, it's, it is a wall call. Okay, <laughs> Jesus. Right. Oh, there I am. Ah. <laughs> it's a wall call. <laughs> to the windows, to the wall. All right. Um, how you doing? Well, you, got, you got a question for us? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'd love to talk about, uh, so I will unfollow someone, like a friend of mine, if their lifestyle or success or beauty makes me feel bad about myself. Is that unhealthy? It makes you feel bad about yourself. Um, it, uh, I mean, I followed some, I mean, it's, it's controlling your content as well, but I'd like to dig a little bit deeper into, yeah, let, let's, um, let's hear from Dr. Michelle, actually. Yeah, um, when you feel that way, when you, do you, what happens when you start to, when you say it makes you feel bad, what what are the triggers? Like, how does it make you feel bad in those instances? And what is it that you feel like you have to face um, in that comparison or when you look at those pictures that that's difficult for you? Like, is there are there certain parts of yourself that might be difficult to face or that or that? Um, yeah, that you have to kind of look at when you experience that. Yeah, um, it it makes me face my jealousy or my competitiveness um, head on. Growing up as a dancer, that oh. <laughs> you get competitive mm. real quick. <laughs> right. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. I I don't know. I sh I guess I should pose this as a question too to the doctor. Is do you think it's sometimes healthy to just delete all of these apps and take a break? Do you think that's a, mm. a good way of dealing with this? Because it is overwhelming where these problems have always existed even before social media, but now we're inundated with them because they're available 24-7. Mm. Yeah. yeah, that's a really good point. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think it's definitely getting amplified because of that. So, um, you know, because of that amplification, it might be a good idea to, let's say, take a break or 
take a breather, take some space and just be with things that might resonate more deeply for yourself. Um, and, you know, at the same time, you know, even after taking that break, it's if, if you're still feeling that way, there's something in relation to that that you might want to take a look at, um, you know, as an opportunity to to really connect with maybe some parts of yourself or some deeper aspects of yourself that um, might might be in, more in resonance for you in relation to um, that situation, yeah. right? Because if you're fixed, if you're fixating on that too much, then you could really lose yourself in that, right? You could really lose what's important to you and perspective and parts of yourself that you actually want to invest more time in. Social right? media that could purge. be like more fun to invest more time in. Social that. media purge. That's what our that's what our chat is saying. I think. But I, think I feel it you, Danielle. Healthy. I don't follow nobody with six packs or a better car than Honda. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I think I think you've already done. You've already achieved something that people have so much trouble is admitting to themselves that the reason mm -hmm. that they're they're jealous yeah. and. Yeah. Uh, also, people only post the best parts of their life. And um, I mean, that's also something you got to realize is these people aren't on yachts every other day. Yep. You know, it's just not realistic and social media isn't realistic. Um, but I think if you're if you're doing what's what feels right for you and what's working for you, then there's no reason you shouldn't have to follow someone that you don't want to see their content. I mean, yeah. That's a yeah. that's a personal choice, but you've already kind of recognized what the problem is. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, thank you so much, Danielle. Thank you for calling in and sharing that with yeah, us. Thank you. And, and thank you, Dr. Yeah. Michelle, for being here. Oh. Yeah, my pleasure. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Thank you for your expertise. Thank you. All right. <laughs> so it's that time for our great area poll question, which is on which platform are you the most authentic? Only fans. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, Twitch, Facebook, <laughs> LOL. <laughs> why, why Facebook oh, and LOL? All right, all right. Well, we can't wait to talk to more of you. We'll be right back with more sage advice from, oh, actually, Lauren Gray. Yeah. <laughs> We're talking about living for likes with Lauren Gray. Yes. Since body image is a problem for teens and well, just life in general, how do we try to be healthy through all the imagery we're seeing on social media? What do you think, Lauren? Um, I don't know. I feel like I feel like the biggest thing for me has been spending time offline, mm -hmm. even though it's difficult, um, especially right now and sort of reconnecting with who I am outside mm. of the internet. It's definitely that time, especially oh, during yeah. quarantine, self-reflection, looking self -reflecting outside. Self-reflecting time. Um, well, let's have someone else join the conversation. We got Garrett. What's up, Garrett? Hey, Garrett. Hey, guys. Hey. Would you like to share it? <laughs> right, I would sorry. like to share it. That's pretty I like to appreciate that. All right, um, share it, Garrett. <laughs> uh, so, quick question. How do I stop bullies from commenting on my posts? Uh, I keep blocking them, but they keep making new accounts and commenting and just like generally bugging. Those me. persistent bastards. Don't block them. Yeah, I know. Don't block them and try not to read as many comments. Because it, this is how crazy people have become is that then they notice yeah. you block them and then you're giving right. them a validation that they've bothered you. Mm. So I feel like you, exactly. you just gotta, I, I would I would avoid blocking them unless it's really, really disturbing or like illegal things. That's interesting, cause I didn't hear that. I mean, I usually uh, hear, you know, const keep blocking or whatnot. Like, what, what, do, you, what do you suggest? Yeah, I mean, I mean, if they're that persistent, man, like, like you're saying, what they want is that, that attention. And by blocking them, they'll get bored eventually. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're not giving it the time of day, they're gonna get bored and they'll move on to the next person, unfortunately. But uh, you just gotta realize too, like there, it's insecurity is where that behavior stems from. Uh, so just ignore it. Well, all right. Thanks a lot, Garrett, for Thank sharing. Thank you, Garrett. Thanks, guys. Thanks. All right, we got Sean on the wall for another call. How you doing, Sean? What's up, Sean? 
Hey, how are y'all? Good, good. What's your question? Uh, yeah, so my question is, well, uh, since the pandemic, social media has really become like everyone's shared reality in a way that it wasn't before. And um, it's making me, and I've heard it from a lot of my friends too, feel just like super isolated. Because even though, even when we're together, like when we have like Zoom drinks together or like Instagram, uh, like video chat, um, that togetherness is still a, like alone. Like you're still in reality alone. Um, and it really has been weighing on me. And I just wanted to know if you guys have been feeling that. And if so, like, how do you deal with it? And do you have anything that like, you could let me know that's been good for you? Well, I think th that's, well, the, one I think you, that's, that's the, the, the one thing you don't have to feel alone about is everyone is going through that yeah. at this time globally. Um, we are alone together, as every brand says on TV, right. <laughs> every commercial on screen. Um, but I, I do feel, uh, you know, there's a light at the end of that tunnel, you know, and we're getting there um, and we are adapting to this type of loneliness right now um, that we can't yeah. resolve instantly, obviously, because there's rules and regulations and things, but um, we're all learning together. And that's the one thing that I think reassures me on my lonely moments is like, there's tons of other people going through this exact mm -hmm. same thing. And I know this will sound kind of cliche, but go for a walk. It is like something as simple as that, like yeah. releasing your mind from all of these distractions that remind us of this isolation. Like just get outside, get some fresh air. And I'm, I'm telling you, even, even 10 minutes, it seems like nothing, but 10 minutes will make the biggest difference. Mm. Lauren? Yeah. Yeah, I agree with that. I mean, I've been trying to go on hikes, getting outside. Um, but yeah, it, it is really, it's really difficult to navigate because like, like y'all were saying, everyone's going through the same thing. Um, somebody, sorry, somebody said alone, like Lauren's latest hit. Oh, well, <laughs> thanks so, for the plug. Wait, did you, did you, did you record that before the pandemic or during? I, I did record it before the pandemic, but I've been recording music in the, in during. Clairvoyant. You know, but I just feel like, yeah, I, I predicted that, I guess. <laughs> but um, yeah, I feel like just knowing that everyone's kind of in it together um, and just doing things to get out that get out the house, man. Like, I, I Zoom calls can be really depressing too when you're seeing all your homies yeah. mm -hmm. and they're like, we're like, oh, this is cool, but not really. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, yeah, just do what you can to get outside. Well, Sean, I hope that helped. Take a 10 minute walk, listen to Alone by Lauren Gray. All right. I mean, yeah, stream it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. So Thank you. We appreciate Thank you. Thank you. All right, we're going to check in on the live chat here on Discord. Let's see what's happening. Oh, what do we got, Sasha? All right. My that was pretty me. funny. We have some, whoa, the, they're copying and pasting the poll. Uh, everybody's giving, everybody was actually giving a lot of love to Sean, because I think a lot of people really related to that. Yeah. So again, know that you're alone in this loneliness. Mm -hmm. It's hard to give advice for that, you know, because I feel yeah. like it's such a, no one knows what to do. It's like, man, this sucks. Yeah, it's like, go through it alone. No, I'm kidding. Yeah. <laughs> and remember to vote in our poll, what social media, uh, what social media platform feels most like the real you? I see you. Stay right there. been a gray on gray kind of night here with Lauren Gray. Hey, I don't know exactly how to ask this, y'all. This is for everybody. Um, you ever wake up one of those days, you feel like, why does anyone even follow me or care about stuff I'm posting? <laughs> Every morning. Every <laughs> <laughs> I wake up and I'm like, wait, why am I here? Yeah. Yeah, it's like, oh, another post with my dog and you're still loving it. You know? Yeah. It's, I, I feel that, I don't know why they follow me. I do dumb stuff on mine. Um, I well, don't I mean, now you have like you have music too, so it's a different thing. But like, yeah. do you ever feel that there's something deeper that you would like to express, or is like music that mm. new tool for you? Yeah, I mean, I feel like music has definitely helped with self-expression, but um, I feel like there's always 
things that I that I want to talk about and I, I think that also comes with just time like the older I get the more yeah. comfortable I get with my audience and right. the things I feel like I can talk about because you can't talk about real serious topics when you're 13 14 15 right. so I'm finally getting to the age where I feel more comfortable you know, like you said getting into those sort of what kind of what kind of stuff you think you're gonna post when you're 40 Oh man, I hope I don't have Impossible to post when I'm 40, but we'll see. Um, I don't know. Pictures of my dog still. Yeah. <laughs> Same you got gray hair. Just... Yeah, I hope my dog lives that long. Hey. She's immortal. Hey, we're rooting for the dog. I am. Okay. All right, so our poll voting is closed. The question was on which platform are you the most authentic? And 35% of you said Twitch. You see, Twitch wins. See, Twitch is yes. Twitch seems right. like the new wave because even this poll kind of surprised me. I didn't think it was gonna go 35% Twitch. What was the one percent, the lowest? Uh, TikTok. Whoa. Tic what? TikTok? Wow. I get that. Really? Yeah. Okay. You guys seeing the trends that I don't see it? Facebook, eight percent. There's still Facebookers. Is that my mom? Is that <laughs> my mom vote? My mom and dad voted. I get. 28% on Instagram. I get that, the Twitch thing though, because it's so it's so focused on live, on mm. the live, and all these other platforms kind of came after that. So the fact that you get to spend time with your audience, yeah. you you kind of don't have a filter a yeah. lot of, yeah. a lot of in a lot of those moments. So. How, how do you feel, Lauren? Are you worried about that 1% TikTok? <laughs> I mean, no, because I feel like TikTok's very trend driven. Right, so right. you're kind of just following the footsteps of everyone else. Um, and it is, it can be hard to be yourself in 15 seconds with a song dubbed over That's it. That's a good point. Um, yeah. Instagram, I kind of get because, you know, there's stories that you can post throughout your day. I've never been on Twitch, so I don't really know what that's like, but I'm sure I get the whole live broadcasting is definitely going to be the most true to self because the, you're yeah. on the spot. Well, we're excited to hear more than 15 seconds from you with new music drop in. Thank you. And hopefully yeah. people get to see you perform once all of this, you know, we're able to do live shows. Yeah. yeah stuff. Definitely. Thanks for thanks for coming on the show. Thank we really you guys appreciate yeah. it. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Once again, the time has flown by. Thank you. Thank you. We're here every Wednesday and Friday live. 7 p.m. West Coast. Next Wednesday, Sherry Cola will be joining us. She's hilarious. That's one of my homegirls. She's one of the stars of Freeform's Good Trouble. And we'll be talking all things from broke ass dating, et cetera. Yeah, so I'm an expert in that, so don't miss that. And as always, don't forget to send us your questions. Hit us up on all platforms. Thank you so much for watching Gray Area. Shout out to all the grays. Peace.